Hello everyone, this is Omar Jan and welcome to Polycosm. This week, we have a quick side quest to go through as I try something experimental here and share my process with you all. I wanted to create a portrait illustration as I've been trying to improve on my portraiture recently. This is an opportunity for me to see what I've learned from my recent studies and also experiment with a more painterly approach, which is slightly different than my usual workflow. I'll talk about the tools and resources I've used trying to visualize this idea while I'll walk you through the process. Alright, let's get started. As I was trying to visualize this idea, I made a really rough sketch in my sketchbook and I'll be using that as a starting point while I'm blocking in a reference scene in Blender. I wanted to keep my reference very simple so as not to influence my design choices within the illustration. I'm using an Asaro head model that I found via the Sketchfab add-on in Blender. Asaro heads are basically a very simplified version of an average human head that showcases the planes of the head very clearly. This way, I can get a clear understanding of the planes without getting distracted by smaller details. I'm trying to invent the head from my imagination as much as possible just to test my visual library, so I don't want my reference to be too detailed. I'm going to focus on finding the right camera angle and light placement for now. I'm paying attention to the big shadow shapes that are being created and looking for something that I like. Then, I render that image out the usual way. I have also added a skull model in there and placed it basically inside the Asaro head. I made sure to line them up as perfectly as possible, so when I hide the Asaro model by clicking the eye icon next to it, I can get an accurate reference of parts of the skull that will be exposed. Before you render this out, make sure to click this icon here and under restriction toggles, enable the disable in renders button. If you just hide the head model, it will still show up in the final render. You need to click the Disable in Renders button to make sure it doesn't show up in your final render. Then we render the skull reference out as well. We jump into Photoshop now and add both renders in a new file. When you just drag the files in, they should just line up perfectly on top of each other. I rasterize the layers so I can make changes on them, then I add a mask to the skull layer. Looking back at my incredibly detailed and clean sketch, I'm going to mask out the skull reference. This creates a decent enough reference to work with. But I do need more information, so let's head over to this really cool website. I'm sorry, that was a terrible pun. Here is ReferenceAngle.com. This is a pretty cool database that has built-in tools to help you look for a portrait reference from a specific angle, and it lets you filter the results based on gender and age. I'm going to set the 3D model on the top left corner to match the angle I need the references in, then adjust the filters. As you can see, it's not always super accurate and can have a hard time with certain angles, but it's definitely useful. Usually, taking reference pictures of yourself, friends and family can be better if you need something very specific. But in case you can't do that for whatever reason, I highly recommend giving this website a shot. Alright, I got my Blender reference and other photo references set up on the side, and now I'm going to start sketching very loosely. Usually my work focuses on using line art as a base, so I tend to spend a lot of time within the sketching phase to lock things down. Then I will go over the whole thing with a cleaner line art. This time I'm working a little differently. I still start with a loose line sketch, but then move into some basic values right away. This way I'm sort of drawing and painting at the same time. This gives me the chance to establish my light and shadow shapes earlier. Working like this can be especially useful if you already know exactly how you want to set your lighting. In this case I do! And I already have my reference for it, 
so I'll be working mostly in grayscale this way for a while, slowly building up my values. I tend to start pretty low contrast when it comes to painting. This really isn't completely intentional, just for some reason that's how I paint. Which means I'll be building up my darks and bringing out my lights as I work on this. You might see others start with something more high contrast, then find their middle values, which is a perfectly legitimate way of working as well. It's really down to personal preference. Alright, I think I'm happy with where the values are at right now. So I'm going to start adding color over this. Like I mentioned before, I don't work in this way usually, but I wanted to try some different techniques and push myself outside my comfort zone a little. One of the issues you might run into adding color onto a grayscale sketch is that the gray values underneath can make the color get a little muddy later on. So I'm adding a hue saturation adjustment layer on top and checking that box next to colorize to, well, colorize the sketch. This will help me establish a base color theme for the piece and prevent that muddiness from creeping in later on. I am also going to add a levels adjustment layer just below the hue saturation one and lower my contrast a bit. This way, the colorize effect will work a little better. And I will also be able to build up my shadows later on without things getting too dark. Next, I'm adding more localized colors with multiply and overlay layers. Multiply is obviously good for creating darker hues, and overlay can help add some vibrancy, especially to the parts where you'll see more vibrant colors such as the lips and inside of his cheeks. Since my overall color theme is pretty warm, I decided to light the portrait with a cool light to create a nice temperature shift. I went back to Blender to get another light reference render, this time with a more detailed head model. I didn't do this at the beginning because I didn't want the look of the model to influence my drawing and rendering too much initially. But after I established a certain look for the portrait, I decided to get the second reference to help further with my rendering. I'm also using this skull I found on Sketchfab to help with the rendering of the exposed parts. It is difficult to find a picture of an actual skull from this angle, so this will do for now. At this point, I wanted to try adding some muscle tissue underneath the skin layer. At first, I wasn't concerned about making an anatomically correct looking illustration. It was more about the image conveying a certain surrealistic feeling. So on a new layer, I painted some muscle fibers just to see how it might look. Turns out Sketchfab is a great source for this as well. I found this anatomical model that gave me a good idea on how to place the muscle fibers over the skull. I wanted to note here that I have some gruesome open wound references on my other screen that I'm looking at when I'm painting this part. I didn't think YouTube would be okay with me showing stuff like that so I kept that off to the side. Sometimes you do have to look at some unpleasant things for reference. I, I have a pretty good strong stomach when it comes to stuff like that. But also again, the point of this piece isn't really about realism and gore or anything like that. I'm just using the reference to help me create an image that seems grounded enough. I'm going to just time lapse the rest of this now I think. It's just going to be further rendering and cleaning things up. Just remember to stay zoomed out as much as you can.
And here is the final illustration. I started out with a very rough idea and tried a method I'm not that comfortable with, but with the help of some 3D tools, I managed to bring this to a finish without too much hassle and definitely learned a thing or two along the way. And I hope you guys have learned something as well. I think sometimes it's a good idea to start on a project where you are not 100% sure where it might go, but you know, you just kinda go with the flow and see where it leads you. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching and see you next week. Take care everyone.